Hello everybody, in today's video, once again, Monday, shorthand day. So today we're going to start with chapter one, Greg's shorthand anniversary, chapter one. So without further ado, let's get into it. Chapter one, unit one. Shorthand is written by sound, thus aim is written a-m, a-m, long sound of a. Cat is written k-a-t, cat. Ni is written n e. So the only thing I'm going to mention about this is that that they're making this distinction here between orthographic spelling and phonetic spelling. So they're saying that shorthand is written phonetically. Consonants. The consonants are arranged in pairs according to their affinity of sound and are distinguished by a difference in length. The characters for the consonants in this lesson are de derived from an elliptical figure, thus. So this figure here on um, this ellipse, all of the characters can be derived from either portions of the ellipse, uh, a horizontal line, or this line on the diagonal. And what are those characters? Well, we have the sounds k and g, and that is a short stroke, a short upper portion of the ellipse, and then g, is a long upper portion of the ellipse. Er or r is the lower portion of the ellipse, uh, a smaller version, and l is a longer lower portion of the ellipse. N is a horizontal, a short horizontal stroke. M is a long, is a long horizontal stroke. T is a short diagonal stroke. Dro stroke. D is a longer diagonal stroke and then the uh, the h sound or it's also known as the aspirate the aspirate is a single dot and it's placed like at the beginning of a word hero it would be k e r o k e r o so you just place a dot at the beginning and then th has two sounds or uh, sorry it has two strokes it also has two sounds it could either be a th which is known as a theta sound or a th which if you refer back to my ipa sheet which is in the github repository uh, attached below this video you'll see that um, it actually uh, encompasses two sounds in english both the soft sound the the th as in theta or the the as in the word the so uh, the I um, and this is so these last two characters here and I believe I can write on this thing so let me let me circle this so these last two characters here there we go are your vowels and those are going to be the vowels that we're going to learn in this lesson so this is your a ah vowel and this is your e vowel so a ah, that's a ah, a a and this and this lower uh version is a e e okay so now you'll notice here that not only do we have these strokes in fact i'm not even going to mention that because uh section three actually tells us something about why we have these words here connected right next to the uh the strokes so all all these consonants are written forward from left to right uh th or the th and t and d are struck upwards from the line of writing. So just a, a little bit of nomenclature here. Remember that our um, T and D, they're called dentals. Dentals, R's and L's are called liquids. N, N are nasals. Um, and then K, G, I forget exactly what they're called, um, but they're in the IPA chart. So you can see them if you just cross, if you just cross reference on that sheet. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and undo that circling. All these consonants are written forward from left to right. Th and t and d are struck upwards from the line of writing. The g given in this letter is called gay, uh, being the hard sound as in game, get, and not the soft sound heard in gem magic. The aspirate is indicated by a dot placed over the vowel. Many frequently recurring words are represented by simple alphabetical, alphabetic, alphabetic, can't, I can't speak today, by simple alphabetic characters. Some of these signs represent two or even three words. For example, the sign for R, or R, uh, 
uh, represents R, hour, and hour. A dot on the line of writing represents the articles A and N. A dot at the end of a word expresses ing. The pronoun I is expressed by a large circle, he by a smar small circle. The student should practice all these characters until he or she can write them without the slightest hesitation. The size of the characters given in this manual will be a safe standard to adopt. Okay, so when they say that the size of the characters given in this manual will be a safe standard to adopt, essentially, uh, you, you would take whatever this lettering size is, and you would do the comparable stroke length. So I'm just going to go back up here. So we see here that the stroke for k, if you were to write out the word can by hand, so then the stroke should be about that long. The stroke for g should be about the length of the word good. So g would be that long, k would be that long. I might have to, I don't know if I can make a new layer here. I just make it in a new video and then post it at the end. But I'll actually show you all those strokes written out. So right now we're just going to cover the rest of the lesson here. And then I'll go over the strokes. So we're going to cover phrasing. We covered the letters the um, simple words or brief strokes as they're called phrasing the joining of simple words in a in a is a great help to accuracy and speed in writing shorthand and its acquirement should not be deferred until the habit of writing common words separately has been formed so what this is essentially telling us is that don't be shy of phrasing learn how to phrase right off the bat especially for simple uh, for simple words like they will, he can, she will, it will, I will, words that flow together in in a word, as they say, phrasing here, it's very good to at least start thinking in those terms, especially because as we go forward in this in this uh, um, uh, chapter, you'll see that what you would think of as words are actually words strung together. And it really does speed things up. So, for instance, uh, we're going to learn um, a word here. Actually, they show us. I don't even. I don't even have to show you words that you don't know yet. So, off to the side, I'm going to write this here. So, I will. Um, he can. Um, you could have it would. So that would be. I, I think we've learned would, right? Let's see here. Let's scroll back up here. Yes, it would. So actually, it would would be a very long stroke. This is interesting. You can string them together. So this is it, and then this is would. So you would just string them together. It would. It would. And you would say, it would not. That would be, it would not. It would not. See that? So that's actually three words put together. Do you want to do? There we go. One more. All right, so punctuation, uh, let's see. So we, we have I will, he can, it will, in the. And you see these are just the simple words that have been strung together. Punctuation, uh, etc. In shorthand, the following marks are used. Period. So this is a stroke like that. Uh, paragraph. And this is this is essentially what's known as a pill crow. So if you see, I always get this backwards. I think it's it's not a P, it's like a 9. So the, that's nine, and then a pill crow is like that, if I'm not mistaken. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this, it, you'll see it a lot in, um, in legal documents. So and it used to be a lot more common in, in a lot of books from 100 years ago, when they wanted to mark the beginning of a paragraph, they would simply put the pill crow symbol. So it's one of those, one of those obsolete symbols now. So we have paragraph, interrogation is just an X, dash is two lines, hyphen is two short strokes, and then a parenthesis. The reason why they have a downward stroke and then a line through it is because if you just did a downward stroke for the parenthesis, so like you have some word in uh, like I, I will in parentheses, so I will, and then if you put parentheses around it, well, those two strokes the parenthetical braces are actually strokes in shorthand. So this stroke here on the left-hand side is, it, it could be a B or a P. 
and this stroke on the right hand side could be an F or a V and we'll cover that later in in later chapters. So in order to differentiate them you simply have to do the stroke and then put a horizontal dash through the middle and then that will differentiate it from a phonetic stroke. Okay, uh, capitals and proper nouns are indicated by two short dashes beneath the word. So let's say, for instance, uh, if someone's name Cam, we actually know all the letters for that. So Cam for Cameron, right? Like Cameron Haynes, the long distance runner. So Cam, if I write that and I want to make it a name, a proper name, then I put two strokes under it. So that would be Cam, K -A -M, Cam. Okay, uh, I'm not going to worry about the sentence drills. I will be making separate videos and hold me to that. Hopefully I don't forget, but um, I will be making separate videos for the sentence drills. So this, what, what this is essentially is uh, you would speak or your teacher would speak the line and then you would have to write these sentences from memory or vice versa, you would uh, read the text and you would have to read it out loud, okay? Um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and cover vowels. We still have time. In shorthand, there are 12 distinct vowel sounds which are arranged in four groups. And you actually see this at the beginning of the book where it shows the diagrams of the various alphabetical characters and then also the four the four vowel sounds, as they say, arranged in four groups, and three closely related sounds are placed in each group. In this lesson, we have the first two groups, which for convenience are named the A group and, excuse me, the E group. Now they say this memory aid that the long, uh, that, that the large uh, stroke, which is the A group, is essentially just the letter, it's the letter A, and then you just cut the tail off, and then that's your A group, okay? Honestly, just memorize it. <laughs> I mean, you can you can use memory aids, but the key here, as they say in the preface, and then also it's replete through the book, is the only way you're going to learn this is by drilling. So you have to drill, drill, drill uh, until it's second nature, okay? So what are these groups? So the A group. If you just have a circle, this is the sound a, ah, forward a. Ah. So on the on the IPA chart, it would be what well, what would that be? Uh, open, open front, I believe. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to go down that rabbit trail. So this would be the a, ah, as in Matt, and then they show you the uh, the uh, stroke in Greg that would correspond with that sound. Mat. So, m, a, t, m, a, t, mat. And then we have calm, k, a, m. Now, notice here, this, we say calm, but you only, it, Greg, shorthand is about mastering the ability of removing unnecessary information when it comes to sounds. So, in the word calm, you can you can almost think of the word calm without having to use the letter L. So you have calm, calm, calm. See that? So that's why you see the stroke here in Greg is just k -a -m, calm, calm. And then how you differentiate this from being cam or calm, then you have to put a dot underneath. So notice there's a dot underneath the circle. And that's how you indicate the ah sound. So we have the a ah sound, ah sound, and then we have the a ah sound. So a, ah, a, ah, a, ah. and a, ah, the long sound, is it indicated by the stroke underneath the vowel. So this would be the word came, k, a, m, k, a, m. Okay, uh, so that's our that's our a group, a. Ah, so a, ah, sorry, I, I think I just drove my mic. Um, so a, a, a. And then we have our e group, which is e, e, e. E, e, e. So as in kit, so k, i, t. And then e as in get, g, e, t. 
and notice the same rules apply. If it's the short sound, then it has no indicator. It's the pure vowel by itself. If it has a dot underneath, it's what's known as the medial, the medial sound. And then if it has a stroke underneath, then it is the long sound. Note, the first sound in the E group of vowels is the short I. Oh, sorry, is the short I heard in din, and should not be confused with long I heard in dine, which will be given later. And as we will see later, uh, that, that, that long I that they, uh, uh, they speak of is actually a diphthong. I, a, e, I, e. Notice you travel from one vowel to the next. That's a diphthong. And moving on, marking vowels, marking vowels, and then we will do picturing writing motion because that's necessary to know in order to start practicing the strokes. So we have marking vowels. The vowels are grouped according to similarity in sound. The large circle expresses three sounds of A. The short sound is unmarked. The medium sound is marked with a dot and the long sound with a short dash. This system of marking is used in all vowel groups uniformly. So whether it's going to be our A group, our E group, our O group, or our U group, you'll see that if you want to indicate the medial and the long sounds, dot and stroke. That's universal. Uh, and now, it's, and now it makes one note here which is actually very important, and that is the dot and dash are occasionally needed to indicate the exact sounds in unfamiliar or isolated words, but otherwise they are seldom used. So it's enough, especially when you become more familiar with Greg, it's enough that you have the vowel um, stroke present. You don't actually have to indicate the quality of the vowel. Okay? The context, the context itself will indicate the quality. Picturing writing motion. Number nine, frequently, we shall have to refer to writing motion. The curved characters in this lesson are taken from horizontal ovals, one written with right motion, the other with left. So what do they mean by this, uh, this right and left motion? Well, what they're talking about is essentially what we would call clockwise or counterclockwise. So if you have a character that's written with right motion, you're writing in clockwise motion. So on a stroke here, like they say here, K and R, they'll notice here K and R are right motion strokes. What they mean by this is that in order to form the stroke, you start on the left and you work to the right or you travel clockwise. So K is that stroke right there. And then g is that stroke. K, g. Notice I traveled from left to right. So left to right or clockwise. If and hopefully, hopefully you guys know how to read a clock face. But even if you didn't, I just watch some of the movies that are now in the public domain, and all you'll see is analog clocks. So if you have your clock hands right. Your clock hands travel in this direction. We call that clockwise. If you are traveling in the opposite direction, you call that counterclockwise. So clockwise is traveling in the direction of clock face hands, and counterclockwise is traveling opposite the direction of clock hands. So when they mean left motion, let me get rid of all this graffiti. There we go. So left motion has to do with counterclockwise. So if you have a stroke that is written in left hand motion, you will travel in a counterclockwise fashion. And it says here, characters taken from the left motion oval are called left motion because of the rotation is from left to right. Characters taken from the right motion oval are called right motion for a like reason. Thus, k and g are right motion strokes, and then r, l, are left motion strokes. The terms left motion and right motion refer to the rotation in movement and not to the direction. Okay, so this is not saying that one travels right, one travels left. This is simply saying start in or uh, in order to make the stroke, you travel to the right or you travel to the left. And how circles are joined 
Eh, I think we're going to go all the way until we actually talk about consonantal blends, because this way we'll actually be able to talk about how to form our circles, our vowels. The following movement drills are intended to develop skill in the joining of circles. Circles joined to single strokes. At the beginning or end of a single curve, the circle is placed inside the curve. So what do they mean by this inside? They mean that if I have this stroke here, this portion is inside. That's inside the curve. So the stroke, oh, I think, uh, am I frozen? Undo. There we go. So in that stroke, eek, the, uh, like to eke out a living, you form it by making sure that your circle is inside the curve. So I couldn't really write this direction because I have to form my K sound. So I couldn't start on the left-hand side of the circle. I would have to start on the right-hand side of the circle and travel in the right, uh, it, travel in a right hand motion or travel clockwise okay um let's see let's grab another one let's scroll down to ha uh, let's see ray because we have eek and hag now notice the aspirate h you just put a dot over the top and that's how you uh, uh that's how you would uh differentiate this from being the word ack <laughs> like uh, maybe an ACAC gun, right? That, that, was, uh, that was an anti-artillery gun in World War II. Um, HAG would be AG, which is Cockney for HAG, so I guess that's the same. But uh, anyway, so we have Alley or Ale or Ray. So notice this is a left-hand motion, so you actually are traveling in a counterclockwise motion in order to form the stroke. So the word Ray, you start off with R, R, A, and then you would put a dash underneath. Otherwise, it's Ra, which, you know, the was that the Egyptian sun god, right? Ra. So, anyway, um, but as as we were saying earlier, the only reason why they have these strokes with, with the differentiations between medial and long sounds is for the purpose of training. When you're actually writing these words out, you, you will very rarely use these, these strokes under the vowels. Okay, moving on to the next one, number 12. At the beginning or end of a single straight stroke, the circle is written with right motion, or the circle is written clockwise okay so the word aim for instance a m a m uh the word me m e the word head and otherwise it says ed once again cockney uh so we have that's the aspirate the dot over the top e d head okay Get rid of all these strokes here one more. There we go. Okay, um, so once again, at the beginning or end of a single straight stroke, the circle is written with right motion or clockwise. All right, and then the next one is reading and dictation practice. Once again, that's going to be a separate video, its own video. Um, and our next section is unit two, circles between strokes. So that's going to be next week's videos. This is uh, enough for today. So thank you very much for watching. So what have we covered? We have covered what are called our forward motion uh, consonants. So let me drag back through. Can I do it by arrows? No, I can't. Um, so let me go back up here. So we covered arrows, or we covered forward motion consonants. Uh, we covered short words. Uh, let's see what else. Our aspirate, uh, the TH sound. We really haven't covered that yet, but... Um, uh, the beginnings of brief forms. That's what these are. So when you use the briefest of strokes to indicate words, those are known as brief forms. And we'll cover later, probably next week, uh, we'll cover how to begin developing a, a, a library of these brief forms, and it's based on the most common words in the language. Um, you'll see in the, in the GitHub repository that one of the documents is a list, a total list of the brief forms that are available from the Greg Shorthand manual. So that's been compiled for your viewing pleasure, and you'll be able to use that to both learn how 
how um, a abbreviated words are formed, how they're thought about in Greg, and also that way you're not guessing if, if a word is a brief form or if it needs a little bit more elongation. So I hope that's helpful. So we've gone over that. We went over brief forms, phrasing. So this is the joining of simple words, punctuation, periods, paragraph, interrogation, dashes, hyphens, and parentheses. Now, one thing to remember is that in punctuation, if it's not on this list, then you get to use the punctuation as you would in your language. So uh, your, your semicolon is going to stay the same. Your comma, colon, uh, those will remain the same. Uh, capitals and proper names, those are indicated by short two dashes. Uh, our vowels, our first two vowel groups, the A group and the E group, or our circle groups, because we'll see a little later, the other vowels are made by hooks. So those are called hook vowels. These are our circle vowels. Uh, let's see what else. Marking vowels. So once again, short sound receives no mark. Medial sound receives a dot. Long sound receives a dash. Picturing writing motion, this is essentially right, right motion is clockwise, left motion is counterclockwise. And finally, the, the making of circles, how circles are joined. If it's a single stroke inside the curve, if it is a, a single straight stroke, then it's with right motion or clockwise. And that's all we're going to have for today. So thank you very much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.